We should get those tuxedo t-shirts <laughs> and wear those every time we do one of these. Yeah. I'm not even kidding. Maybe not the first couple because we don't have those t-shirts. Right. Right. Hi, I'm Corey. I'm Kyle. And this is Docutainment. Welcome. We've, uh, we've, we talked about this before, and it's finally going to happen. Um, our first documentary, actually, in this channel, we're going to watch documentaries, fan-made films, shorts, um, things that kind of pique our interest. Mm -hmm. It is not going to be on one particular topic mm -hmm. or one particular genre. But we did decide that we would start with This is BTS Army. We have seen This is BTS, so we didn't feel like it would be fair for us to go back and rewatch that one right. um this is bts army we have not seen don't know anything about it except for it's, it's about the army mm -hmm. um and so we're going to jump right into it let's do it let's do it and we're going to watch this all the way through so we will talk over it please excuse that we're probably gonna have a lot of questions nice and there's the uh they said it's a BTS shield. Army. BTS Army. BTS Army. BTS Army. BTS Army. Who is the BTS Army? Army was officially established for BTS on July 9, 2013. The meaning of a military army is implied, tying in with the name of BTS, which stands for Pangtan Sonyundan, or Korean for Bulletproof Boy Scouts. ARMY oh, is an acronym <clears throat> for Adorable Representative MC for Youth, given to them in hopes that, that they will raise their voices and stand with BTS. I thought it was like, we're just a gathering of people, so it's an ARMY. Yeah. They often address in their work. Armies in its early conception and demographic spoke for the youth walking alongside BTS to block out stereotypes, criticisms, and expectations imposed on adolescents, actively working to defend and preserve the value and ideals of today's youth. While what initially draws in new hmm. fans may be their talent and their catchy melodies, many grow into dedicated armies due to BTS's core values, missions, and social messages, which have been magnets for the diversity of the fandom. BTS is adamant on their stances against bullying, abuse, and the current socioeconomic norms. They seek to empower youth and women, promoting mental health, self-love, and self-development. They have inspired many fans to better themselves and be active in fighting against social injustices. Armies started small, but passionate, much like BTS. However, one stereotype that incessantly follows the fandom is that of screaming hormonal teenage girls. Mm. While amazing young folks are indeed a part of ARMY, and there is absolutely nothing wrong with being a young or passionate person, statistics prove that BTS reaches far beyond its expected demographics. Take a look at this age demographic. 24% are in their 20s, 28% are in their 30s, and 25% are 40 years old and over. Here's a graph from we actually Reuters, do get a lot of people that talk about how they're in their 50s. Web traffic for yeah. 2020 and map of the soul tour tickets. <clears throat> Females ages 25 and up made up 46% of web traffic, while 31% were males. Armies hail from different countries, backgrounds, ethnicities, ages, creed, and gender. I think it is important to note that there are passionate fans in almost all disciplines and subcultures, most notably in the sports world. I do often wonder why it's socially acceptable for boys and men to show their undying love and support for something they're fanatic about, yet girls and women are so often belittled for their enthusiasm. To help you visualize, take a look at this graph from Research BTS, showing similarities and differences between sport fans and boy band fans. Also, note that older fans often have more disposable income. That helps them afford the band's merchandise and concert tickets, and creates an advertising market for the products the band promotes to older consumers, including Samsung phones and Hyundai cars. 
Their dedication, passion, and organization has helped us support BTS through a myriad of paths, enabling BTS and armies to achieve incredible results such as getting BTS's single Dynamite to debut at number one on the Billboard Hot 100 and staying in the top spot for two consecutive weeks. Only 44 songs in the chart's history have debuted at number one and only 20 of those songs remained on the top for a second consecutive week. With the success of Dynamite, BTS was recognized by the Recording Academy for their music for the first time, securing them a Grammy nomination for the best yeah, pop duo group performance, making them the first Korean pop <clears throat> act to ever be nominated under this category. Since then, BTS has achieved three number one debuts on the Billboard Hot 100, with the most recent one being Life Goes On. Unlike their single Dynamite, which was sung in English, Life Goes On was sung in mostly Korean. The day Dynamite dropped, it had a total of 1,700 spins on the US radio, while Life Goes On only had six total spins on US radio. <laughs> I can understand that. This yeah, made the Korean. Life Goes On no at number one what? even more impressive. Yeah. Or that it's Not right. only because it's of just, language, but yeah. because radio airplay accounts for a large portion of the Hot 100 scores. With the release of Life Goes On and the new album B, BTS topped multiple charts on its release week. Each achievement on this non-exhaustive list is remarkable in its own right. But the true marvel of Life Goes On is this. A largely Korean language song debuted at number one on the Billboard Hot 100 with virtually no radio play, no remixes, and no bundles. Hmm. The song's stratospheric debut offers unimpeachable proof of BTS's popularity and the dedication of their fans. Together, they have the subverted a neat that they said that listen, this got no radio play. Practices Only are six often a day and still in racism yeah, that's and xenophobia, <clears throat> and redefined what a Korean pop act can achieve on the U.S. charts. Army has also helped BTS Beatles. set historical records, mm -hmm. such as the Beatles' 52-year record, Bee Gees' 42-year record, Michael Jackson's 36-year record, Celine Dion's 24-year record. Adele's five-year record, and more. BTS has sold out multiple stadiums around the world, including two nights at the Wembley Stadium in London, which holds 90,000 people. Wow. And the concert sold out in just 90 minutes. That's insane. Making <clears throat> BTS the 12th artist to ever sell out the legendary Wembley Stadium. During a time when streaming numbers have increased, and traditional album sales have decreased, BTS holds the records for the best-selling physical album of the year and the only act to sell over 500,000 copies in the United States. The album Map of the Soul 7 has sold over 4 million copies worldwide. In 2019, BTS were chosen as endorsement models for Hyundai's Palisade SUV. Hyundai estimated sales to be around 25,000, but had already received 52,000 orders weeks after its announcement, and the numbers kept growing. The demand for the Palisade skyrocketed so rapidly, Hyundai struggled to keep up with demands and was backlogged by 6 to 10 months. In 2020, BTS endorsed luxury massage chair brand Bodyfriend. Their sales increased by 46% from cow. the previous yeah, I want a year. Friend. In short, <clears throat> ARMY sell out everything the numbers touch. <laughs> Unsurprisingly, their purchase power goes beyond BTS merchandise. The fandom once sold out fabric, softener, and wine. BTS themselves are charitable and are aware of their power and influence. They have been leading by example. Armies never straying far from BTS's actions have also taken to show their love and support towards all seven of the members, but also towards each other and the world around us. While they sell out stadiums and set and break records in the music industry, they've also nurtured a strong and loving community. On Twitter, crops of accounts unusual within a music fandom have been cultivated, such as BTS Army Medical Union, 
an account made by pre-med medical students and health professional fans who sought to make learning about medical science fun and accessible. Accounts like BTS Army Bar Association, made up of army lawyers who took on the task to educate the fandom about laws and legal systems. Army Academy, account providing free tutoring services and advice for young people who need that type of support. Borahe Entertainment, created for army creative artists and musicians. Army Help Center, who seek to provide an open ear for those who might need it for the sake of mental health. They created resources within the fandom to help keep organized and informed. There was even a project called the Purple Ribbon Project to help protect the members from getting mobbed while traveling through airports around the world. The efforts were seen by the band and one of the members, V, even took pictures with the purple ribbons that were used. Not only do we help each other, but we also try to help the world around us. One of ARMY's main charity fan bases, One in an ARMY, created in 2018, is a collective that acts as a guide in global fundraising initiatives for fans to donate directly to charities. To give you an idea, here's the One in an ARMY's charity summary map from 2019. In 2019, more than 370 plus charity projects were created in different countries under ARMY. In 2020, when BTS's concert was cancelled in South Korea due to COVID-19, fans donated their concert ticket refunds to help with relief and prevention efforts. Holy cow, in man. June of 2020, moved by BTS's statement and show of support to the Black Lives Matter movement, armies all over the world who had already been donating to BLM causes band together and matched BTS's 1 million donation in just one day. That's insane. BTS yeah. never fails to talk very highly of ARMY and other artists have also added to the praise. The BTS ARMY. They're some of the most loyal, positive, and fun fans that you could ever dream of. And I just want to say thank you to all of them. Uh, Jimmy Fallon loves you. Our, the ARMY are great. They're the most beautiful human beings. They're so awesome. Also, they're so poorly poorly it's represented Halsey, in it? culture. Mm -hmm. yeah. As she's these, a huge fan girl crazy like she went to the they're Grammy, the opposite. Sick. They're like intelligent, like they're funny. And the only reason she went was to charitable. see them before like, like, They wanted to say thank wow. you to me yeah. for something and they organized something <clears> like charitable in my name. That's awesome. And they were like they were like, what should we do for Halsey to say thank you? Like, should we stream her song? Should we this? And they're like, nah, she doesn't care about that stuff. Let's donate to a charity in her name. And they like, organized this whole thing and then like did this like charitable thing for me. And they were like, this is our way of saying thanks, Halsey. Like, thanks. And I was like, that's spectacular. And part of me was like, why isn't everyone's fans doing this? Can you imagine if everyone's fans thanked them by doing, Seriously, by organizing doing charity in their name? By helping others? What a better place this world would be. <laughs> it would be. And, and I think ARMY, is is just it's just good to people they see when it's real and i've been so grateful that that effort to just be respectful has been taken in such a in such a beautiful way because i know that there have been other instances where people haven't been as respectful which is unfortunate and uh and it's and it's tough to see that because you're like it's not that hard just just be conscious of who you're working with and give love to those who deserve it but i uh, i feel very grateful that they've been they've just opened me with welcome arms and it's so good to me so it's been amazing and on top of that, they've developed this, this global army, this BTS army, that is not just like geeked out fans. Like BTS donated a million bucks to Black Lives Matter, and the army was like, yo, if they can do it, we can do it. And they came, like uh, fans who were already coming out of the pocket to support artists, came out of pocket more to support charity. And this isn't the first time they've done this. This BTS army charity gives a bunch to philanthropic causes. So as an artist, as a performer, Hell, man, we have fun. You know, we're doing good stuff. But if we can resonate through the television to you at home to come out of your pocket to give to a cause, like that's work, man. That's work and that's purpose. And that's like, that's, that's changing the world. <laughs> yeah. you know, like that's impressive. That is yeah. impressive. That is really impressive. 방탄 팬인 아미들이 라디오 노래 좀 틀어달라고 <laughs> 요청했을 때, 오케이, 절대로 그러지 않았습니다. 라고 하는 그 무시와 핍박을 정말 셀수 없이 당해야만 했었죠. 그런데 팬들은 절대로 거기에 지지 않았습니다. 어떤 무시와 편견이 닥치더라도 끝까지 왜? 이들의 음악은 정말 훌륭하기 때문에 사람들에게 사람들을 변화시킬 수 있는 힘이 있기 때문에 
널리 전파해야만 한다라는 뭔가 역사적 사명 같은 걸 가지고 있었던 거예요. I hope that this video has given you valuable insight that armies value positivity and kindness while actively fighting against prejudice just as BTS does. So despite constant pushback from the music industry, the media and other fandoms often being discredited, bullied and stereotyped, BTS and ARMY continue to lift each other up. To learn more about BTS, their personalities and more, please refer to these websites, apps and ARMY accounts to stay tuned. If you'd like to learn more about them through my videos, check out This is BTS, BTS's contribution to music, and BTS hardships. The Purple Hub is also still working on future projects such as a website and more informational videos. Stay tuned! This is interesting. That was very interesting. Interesting. Um, you always hear about you know fans, and I, and I think you know you're seeing this stuff from the Ed Sullivan show when the Beatles would perform and mm -hmm. people pass out. Same thing with Elvis and sure. and Michael, Michael Jackson. Jackson. Yeah. Um, and but you never really hear about fans like doing things that the artist is doing. Yeah. Like if the artist is like, yeah, I'm going to do it. well. I guess the one thing that I did read and <clears throat> was in This Is BTS is that they rarely ever talk about charities that they give to, Yeah, um, that they constantly do things. And the only reason that people find out is because, you know, they do really, really deep research because they're not public about it. Um, and That's the way it should be. It though. is the way it should be. And we were actually talking about that with my brother this weekend. Yeah, we were. When we were in North Carolina, talking about how he was doing things that, you know, he didn't do publicly. He just did it because it was the right thing. Yeah. No cameras, no shout outs. He even hid like his his name so that people didn't know what his name was and they couldn't post it on Facebook because that wasn't the right reason. And I think that that is the way it should be. And it feels like the fans are doing it for the right reason. Yeah. Um, now, I can do it at the flip side of the coin and say BTS could be could become like the biggest super villains in the world. Right? <laughs> wow. No disrespect. I'm just saying, think about it. If they really were like, we're taking over. I mean, I'm, how many, there's like 90 million in in the army. So, but it's all for good. And I, and I love the the scenes with like John Cena and uh, and Jimmy Fallon when they were talking me. about yeah. Halsey. Yeah. But, you know, Halsey's a huge fan. Um and there's a couple other ones recently also. But we've heard a lot from a, a lot of you, like mm -hmm. Simon Pegg is yeah. a big fan. Uh, who was the other one we just recently heard about? Oh, Anderson Pack mm -hmm. is a huge fan. Um, and you have all of these other celebrities and musicians that are coming out. And a lot of them actually feel that BTS has been robbed because of their talent. And I think that kind of showed itself at the last Grammys where even mm -hmm. Justin Bieber was in there. But I think, to be fair, I don't think Justin Bieber's ever won a Grammy. I don't know. I, I can't speak to that. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I don't keep up with that music Really, either, though? But I don't think so. I think he's been nominated like 77 times and he's never won either. Um, so it, it feels like maybe the, the Grammys are not always, but it, that's the way award shows are. Yeah. You know, your artist is usually going to be the one that's never going to win, and you always feel jilted about it. But I'm not discounting BTS's talent. Mm. Oh no, because I think that they do that's things. Not a question. That, yeah, I think that they do they do things that other artists can't. I mean, they, they cross not only like physical boundaries, right? Cultural they, boundaries. Cultural boundaries, like, but also language barriers. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's rare that you're going to find. Yeah, I think Justin Bieber did it partly in one of his songs, um, and you know, even Halsey or some of these other mm -hmm. huge artists, they're not going to sing in in another language. No, um, and yet BTS does it in multiple languages: Korean, Japanese, English. Uh, it, there's just there's multiple languages that they that they sing or rap yeah. or do whatever. Um, and, and what's interesting is that they each have their own individual personalities and solo careers. Um, See, it seems to me that like any time you get an artist that it's going to sing in a different language, it's usually, I mean, and it's just, this just could be the way that I perceive things, and that's fine, and, I, and I'll be willing to admit that if I'm wrong. Um, but it seems quaint to sing something right. in, in, in a different language, and I think, that's, I think that sucks. Um, do it or do it. Just, just do it. You know, what's the, what, there's, there shouldn't, it shouldn't have an agenda. And that's one of the things I'm finding that I, I really love about BTS and and uh, 
just their fans are just ridiculously awesome. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I actually agree with you there. And the reason why is they've only <laughs> got two you they've only got two English songs. Mm. And that was Butter and Dynamite. And yet, like we just saw, their um until life goes on you know, topped at the Billboard Top 100 mm -hmm. because, and it was in it was in Korean mm -hmm. because one, it's the power of the army, right? I mean, you get that type of fan base behind you, you can push anything you want to, and two, it shows off that their that their music and cross cultural and and language barriers to just look at the talent and not look at the actual language that it's that it's sung in. Yeah. Um, and I, and I wish I could see more of that. I mean, I think way, way back in the day, Christina Aguilera did almost an entire album in Spanish because that mm -hmm. was her, you know, she was, that's her culture also. Um, and so I, I respect that. Um, and I respect the fact, honestly, that, that BTS hasn't done as many songs in English. Yeah, I like that. Um, and that they've stuck with their, mm -hmm. that their, their roots and, and, and the language that they're most comfortable in um, mm -hmm. because that shows that we're not going to cater to what the norms are in order to become bigger and famous. And, and honestly, they haven't. I, I can't, really can't think of a fan base, with the exception of maybe Michael Jackson's fan base in his prime, that is as big as uh, BTS. Oh, yeah. There, I, it's just, it's, yeah. I, I, it, here's the thing. It, like, with me anyways, it, it, I'm, and I'm finding myself lowering my guard after yeah. every time we watch yeah. something or doing something, because my instinct uh, with... When I hear about an artist who's like like BTS, how how amazing they are and how how giving they are, I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop. Right. I'm waiting for like a true side to come out, and and that's just me personally because that's how I feel. I've had a, a, like a lot of my favorite artists. I'm like, wow, you're a horrible horrible person. horrible person, and I love what you're doing, but it's just you are terrible, and it's hard for me to like listen to something, and so. Watching all this and seeing how they act and seeing how that when they're being charitable, they're they're doing it. They're not trying to be public about it uh, at all. As a matter of fact, it looks like they're avoiding doing yeah. anything publicly. And I think that's awesome. Um, and it, I'm 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 starting to lower my guard, which is I guess that's me growing. That's <laughs> true. Um, and I think it's fair. And they just want to. And, and I hope that y'all have made it this far with us. I think that it's fair to say that we are not. We, we have not been fans of BTS in the past. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's fair. I mean, we, we've only started this own, this own podcast within the last couple of months and really just discovering BTS within the last couple of months. Yeah. We don't know a lot. We're trying to learn. And I will say that 99.9% .9 of people that have commented on our videos have been freaking amazing. Yeah. And they will say, I love what you're doing. How did you know this? Or you should really check out this. Mm -hmm. There's always going to be those, those fans that are just toxic fans. Yeah. Um, because we've had a few, and even oh, yeah. and 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 I'll and I'll I'll, I'll be the, I mean I, I'll say this. It's like because we've been accused of of putting BTS up on here for views and stuff like that, and yet we don't make any money off nope. of this. We can't monetize anything. Uh, and yeah. if you've looked at the rest of our channel, BTS is not the only thing that mm -hmm. we do because it literally our it channel was, wasn't just about that. It, it was it was. It was just like anything else. It's like we were taking suggestions at the start of it. And it's like, why don't y'all watch a BTS video? And he and I are both like, uh, all right. Okay. I mean, we're not going to turn it down because we don't know it. But, and it was just like, okay. Yeah. And it, we were like, and we were just really. And I think the thing that keeps us coming back yeah. is that we're finding out more and more. Like, they were like, mm -hmm. won't you watch August D? And I was like, August D? They're like, yeah, that's sugar from BTS. And we're yeah. like, okay, check that out. And you're like, holy shit. Uh, <laughs> that was oh. really cool. And I will say, um, I, I, I tend to stay away from the comment, comments because I don't like to I don't like to read them, um, and I tend to answer in my own on my own account. So sometimes I'll you know somebody will comment and I'll respond back not from the channel but from my own. Yeah, and I, I get impatient, <laughs> but I will say that um, with the exception of one video that we've watched, we've watched all of them with subtitles on, uh, and so we get comments like, "You should watch the, the, with the subtitles; you'll get more context." And, and I guess when we're posting it, we're not yeah, posting we're not, the we're not subtitles. So I, we don't we don't stream it from YouTube mm -hmm. because one, you're running to commercials, you're running to advertising. We want to be able to watch the video completely the way through. So what we'll do is we will actually we will actually get the video mm -hmm. and have it on our computer, and we will. Put the subtitles onto it, and but when I when I layer it, swear, Stormy. Cat, when I layer it on top of the editing, 
the subtitles on carry over. So for all of you that are wondering, we do watch yeah. all of the videos with the subtitles on. And um, their lyrics are phenomenal. Yeah. Um, they're really, really <laughs> Like deep. you said. <laughs> and, and, and the videos are really, really deep. Well, listen, we can go all day long. Yeah. These are our opinions. We hope that you respect them. We, we're going to be wrong about a lot of stuff. Yeah. And, and sometimes you may not agree with some of the things we say, but there are opinions and we, we have to find our way through this with any musician. I think you said something and this is the last thing I'll say. We there was an artist I wasn't a big fan of, but I did like his music way back in the day. Is Marilyn Manson? Oh yeah, and we both had listened to Marilyn. And yeah. the other day we were riding in the car, and a song came up on one of the playlists, and it was Marilyn. And you were like, "Turn the shit off." Yeah, and it's because of the things that we found out about Marilyn Manson that have recently come to light. And mm -hmm. it's like, listen, yeah, he's good as crap, but he's a horrible person. And why would you... And so for us, you always look at somebody and you're like, oh, you're doing great things. Oh man, there's, something's bad is going to happen. Yeah. Something's bad is going to happen. But that hasn't happened. And, mm -hmm. and and BTS has been going for freaking 10 years, 12, 11 years. Um, yeah. So anyway, thank you for taking this journey with us. We'll be doing some more. Um, and thanks for watching our first docutainment. My name mm -hmm. is Corey. I'm Kyle. Bye.